Welcome back. All right, we're going to uh, hammer out these categories coming out. Uh, make sure your voice is heard in chat. Let us know. I know so far a lot of you in chat has pretty much agreed with what we said because, of course, we are all knowing. Um, so I am always right. I've never been wrong <laughs> right. about anything. Yeah, he's always right. He was definitely snubbed. For exactly. Year. All right, let's get the ball going again. Best action adventure. This is for the best action adventure game. Combining combat with traversal and puzzle 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 solving. <laughs> puzzle solving. Puzzle um, solving. Puzzle solving. So we I have think the best puzzle screen. solving out of all of these. <laughs> no, okay, <go> ahead. <laughs> we have that screen Valhalla, Ghost of Tsushima, Marvel's Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Ori and the Will of the Wisp, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and The Last of Us Part Two. Uh, Caboose, you have some thoughts. Okay, uh, I think I remember last week when we talked about this, I was saying I was gung-ho about Ghost of Tsushima, but I, I had a minute to sit on this. And oh. and I'm starting to – I'm trying to think less in terms of, well, if it was nominated here, it should win here. And I'm trying to think more of the specific category. What is the best action-adventure game? What gets that right the most? Sure. It's got to be Spider-Man. I think it's got to be Spider-Man. Oh. That, for me – is it's just the perfect condensed super fun experience traversal combat puzzle solving all the, all like it's firing on all cylinders uh <laughs> doing, <laughs> doing a great job in that and it's got like such a nice story um it, it sends really good messages so like i think for for just specifically for talking action adventure i go spider-man I just I interrupt our predictions because there's a wild leafex in chat that appeared and trying to trigger me because they're saying that Immortals Phoenix Rising is better than Breath of the Wild. Well, guess what? You Anyways. suck. That's you cool. suck. Okay, you suck. No, it is not the best leafex. Dang it, Brody. Stay in your lane. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Let's uh, have a look. Okay, my thoughts. Um, I'm gonna actually say. Ooh, okay. No, uh, this is hard. I'm going to say Assassin's Creed. Okay. I feel Ooh, okay. the traversing in Assassin's Creed, you go on a boat, you climb things, you could dive. There's so much that you could do. Plus, there's so many mini games within it that deal with problem solving. Um, and the combat is just mm -hmm. like upgrading all your weapons, trying to put runes to your weapons. Like, there's so much that's going on. I feel like it. it's probably not the popular choice, but I'm going to put my heart with Assassin's Creed Valhalla here. I'm going to go to Tsushima. I think when you look at the category, action slash adventure, that game has it in spades. Uh, when you look at the action, the the different stances you take, um, and the adventure, I mean, it's an open, sprawling world. You can go from point A to point B and just experience all this all this background and, and, and yeah. great noise. I, I think it, it goes to Tsushima really takes it away. Yeah, I, I it, this is so hard between Ghost of Tsushima and Miles Morales. The mm -hmm. I you know what? I think I'm going to vote for Ghost of Tsushima, but it really feels like it's a bat it's going to be a battle between those two because it, Marvel uh Spider-Man Miles Morales, it oozes style and it just does everything possible to set itself apart as its own unique identity, but at the same time, Ghost of Tsushima emerging as a new IP and for what it is, I you just can't deny it. All I right. wouldn't be upset if Ghost won. <laughs> <laughs> All right, best action. For the best game in the action genre, focus primarily on combat. You have Doom Eternal, Hades, Half-Life Alex, Noah 2, and Streets of Neo. Rage. Neo. Neo, so Neo, Neo 2. 2 and Streets of Rage 4. Uh, Doom. <laughs> okay. I think it's going to be Hades. I, I want it oh. to I want it to be Doom, but it's gonna be Hades. There's been there's been too much buzz and people have been loving this game way too much for it to not win. Doom is great, but but Doom does what Doom does. You shoot some demons in the face and you chainsaw them. But Hades did a really good job of stepping apart as a, as an indie and coming from the developers who still made you know Bastion and some other games. Uh, Supergiant has done a great job with Hades to make it stand out on its own. So I gotta go with that. I'm right there. I'm right there with you. I, I think it's Hades. I think Doom Eternal does exactly what it needs to, but it's more Doom. Hades came in and owned the conversation, still owns the conversation uh, for being a game in that genre and the gameplay. People just keep talking about it. Uh, although I haven't played it myself, I just keep seeing the discourse on it. So it leads me to believe that something's there. Something special is in that game. <laughs> Yeah, I, I it's between Hades and Doom for me because I have not played Hades. I'm gonna go with Doom. Mm. 
All right, Definitely. innovation in accessibility. This is recognizing software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. You have Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Grounded, Hyper Dot, The Last of Us Part Two, and Watch Dogs Legion. Now, this is oh. this is the first time this category has been at the Game Awards, and I, yeah. I know I mentioned last week, like. It's hard for me and probably a lot of us to speak on this just because um, with accessibility, we don't actually face a lot of those hurdles. Um, So I don't know for this one. I'm just going to throw something out there. I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to say The Last of Us, because when I think of the menu options in The Last of Us, it's really customized. Like there's so much customization that you could do in terms of how you play um, Mm -hmm. in terms like it just takes it much further than I've ever seen really on any other game. So I'm going with the last of us two. Uh, yeah. yeah. The last of us two is the one that I would pick as well. Um, just mainly because of as well, like the, the amount of people that talk about the accessibility options in the last of us two, but honestly, I feel like each of these games deserve like the respect and award in their own right. Uh, and, and just the category existing in general is awesome. I hope it's something that we see uh, being a recurring category every year for the game awards because this is something that more and more needs to be recognized uh, for video games Mm -hmm. and something uh, that people need to realize, you know, there are a lot of people out there that want to play these video games um, and they may not have the, uh, the opportunity to. And and I know like you go, you go back to a conversation, like something about should Sekiro or even like demon souls have a difficulty option Um, because there may be a large audience of people who look forward to a game like that, but can't play it because it's too difficult or because it doesn't provide enough in terms of accessibility. Now, I'm not trying to cause any discourse or flame those games. Like, they're still really well-made games. They're amazing games. But I just appreciate the fact that all the games here that are listed, that are nominated, they're providing options for people um, to be able to play those games and enjoy them uh, regardless of their circumstance or their walk of life. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Again, I'm not I'm not an authority on this, uh, but the fact that when I did play Last of Us Part Two, go into the menus, I was pretty astounded by the amount of stuff that they included in there. And this is also going off of you know the the public reception. I saw a lot of people advocating that Naughty Dog put a lot of effort into their accessibility features. So mm-hmm. again, it just leads me to believe that they have something there. And I really hope again what Kabo said. A lot of people start picking up on this and saying, "Well, how can we improve our games? What can we do to better invite more people to play our games that may not be able to play it otherwise?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go against the game uh, against the grain and say grounded because they added an arachnophobia mode in a game where you are wandering around like wow. as a minute. It's honey, I shrunk the kids, and also too they. It, it really did a good job of making sure that not only like younger audiences, uh, but people who may not have the uh, capability uh, to play games like Ark or, you know, Assassin's Creed uh, to get kind of that same similar experience. So I'm going to say Grounded. I'm going to go you, against You know what? I, I didn't even know that Grounded had an arachnophobia mode. I have arachnophobia. Um, and really? there are actually, yes. And there are actually some like, there's some forms of media that, that make it very hard for me to watch. Like to not get into spoilers and to not like shift the topic too much, but uh, I was watching The Mandalorian season two, sure. and there was an episode. I'm sure if you guys have watched and are caught up, there's an episode that very heavily features like spiders, and mm-hmm. like I, I just I unironically had to sit there and just skip like as oh far as I could until it was over. Uh, there's even like in MK11, if you go into the crypt, oh, well, I was going to say, crypt, Devora, do you, uh, are you like opposed it, to commentating Devora? Devora, players? like Devora <laughs> is fine because like, it's, it's like, I, I joke about how gross it is, but I think it's, it's more over the top, but there is a section in the crypt that actually features spiders that like chase after you and kill you. And like, it, it gives me, like, I can't go to that part of the crypt to unlock chests and stuff. It gives me like, legitimate anxiety so that's really awesome that grounded has an arachnophobia mode because that's something that genuinely affects me right right. so we have best vr and ar dreams half-life alex marvel's iron man vr star wars squadrons Mm. and the walking dead saints and sinners yeah 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 
all around the it's, board. Yes. It's weird that Boneworks <laughs> wasn't in this. That's the only, I, I'm not a big VR person, but Boneworks was like really well anticipated and people loved it and, and the physics engine and it was incredible. But it's Half Life. Mm. Like, if, how do you beat Half Life? Yeah, yeah it, just, it just changed, I think, or opened a lot of people's eyes because it's this huge IP, Half-Life, um, to mm. what VR could do in terms of feeling more um, that you're in control in terms of how you interact with the game. Um, so, yeah, definitely Half-Life for me as well. Best And also, who, I was just going to say, who thought that Half-Life was going to come back as a VR game? That was exactly. a surprise. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Uh, best community support. Uh, you, this is recognizing game for outstanding support um, within the community, transparency and responsiveness, exclusive of social media activity and game updates slash patches. You have Apex Legends, Destiny's 2, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, Fortnite, No Man's Sky, and Valorant. I, no Man's Sky! I feel like they've done so much. Yeah. I really, I really want to say No Man's Sky, but the thing that really is the ticket item is inclusive of social media activity and game updates and packages. And while we were sitting here, I got an update for Fortnite that the DC's Last Laugh bundle is available now. Mm -hmm. So I think when you when you look at community support and ha or community support and how Fortnite has done an amazing job of keeping their community involved and engaged and updated, I, I think that they're going to win. But my heart says No Man's Sky because I still play No Man's Sky to this day. I, I don't think Valorant's there yet to compete with these I, others. I go No Man's Sky for just yeah. yeah. I, I go No Man's Sky for the 180 it made in terms right. of like the way everyone was like, "What yeah. the hell? What <laughs> happened? You know what was this game to now where it is where everyone's like, this is amazing." Um, and when I look at Fortnite, while that could be the easy pick, um, they have they've actually taken a lot of steps back in terms of community support. I don't think they even put up patch notes anymore for when they get really? updates out there. Uh, a lot of the community themselves have to figure out certain things like have damage um, have damage numbers kind of reduced, what weapons got vaulted, what's been you know what's been added, things like that. They've actually taken a lot of steps back, and I think it's just because of some of the noise that that community makes. So again, I, I'm gonna go No Man's Sky here. Traditionally, I, I would definitely agree No Man's Sky. However, I'm looking at it from this year uh, mm -hmm. on its own. And I mean, I just don't think that No Man's Sky did all that much this specific year. I think that like a lot of people think of No Man's Sky and they think of the 180 when they release that uh, next update. I think that right. was when it was really in the conversation. In terms of this year, I can't really think of all that much that No Man's Sky has done. Beyond was this year. They're uh, oh, okay. the big second update. That's right. Mm. Uh, I kind of want to just give it to Fall Guys. Um, they kind of own that conversation when it came out. A lot of people, you know, th they had a lot of issues with their servers and stuff like that. They were out on top saying, okay, guys, listen, uh, we're right there with you. Uh, we're going to keep you updated and all that. Then they started reaching out uh, to, you know, different companies and getting them involved and all that. And they were really right there on social media. And a large, large component of this category is social media presence. So I, I kind of mm. could see Fall Guys taking it. All okay. right. Uh, best mobile game. This is for the best uh, game playable on mobile devices. You have Among Us, Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, Legends of Runeterra, Pokemon Cafe Mix. Like, Pokemon, what are you doing there? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give this one to Genshin Impact. Uh, just yeah. because for what it provides as a mobile game was really outstanding um, for when it was released. When I first saw Genshin, I thought it was just a console game when I didn't know anything about it. But the yeah. fact that it's accessible on mobile, I want to go with Genshin. Although I think, I think Among Us may win this one, but I'm gonna go with Genshin. I think I think Genshin. I'm gonna go with Genshin Impact because I think it is a better mobile game. Yeah. It has so much content. There's so much yeah. care put into it. They've had like five or six major patches since that game has released. Among Us is an old game that is still playing on the same map. So that's where the big barrier for me. And plus two, if I have to look at people who aren't like big gamers, right? I look at my girlfriend who has played both Genshin Impact and Among Us, and she's still playing Genshin Impact to this day every single day. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 50-50 between Among Us and Genshin, but I agree that Genshin, just in terms of a content standpoint and just a presentation standpoint, and from gameplay and everything, provides more of an experience than Among Us does. 
but there is still a pretty good chance Among Us wins. But I agree. I think it's Genshin on this one. I'm I'm going Among Us. Uh, we've already talked ad nauseum about what Among Us has brought to the table, but I think yeah. that's just an extension <laughs> of it. The, the rise in success that this game has had and like the accessibility, the fact that it's free on mobile, it has invited a lot of players into the game. So I, mm. I think I think it gets it. Yeah. All right. So best indie for outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside of the traditional publisher system. Carry On, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, Hades, Spelunky 2, and Spirit Far uh, Farer. Uh, so I'm going to say Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. Everyone was talking about it when it came out. And it's just so fun to play a reimagined it's a party game. Yeah. All right. I have to. I'm. I'm going against the grain. Spirit Fair. Look, if you have Xbox Game Pass, it, I think the game is only like five, ten bucks. Anyways, play this. It is. A, it is adorable. It is heartwarming. It is on the same level of Celeste. You. You play as you take over for uh, Charon, who is the Spirit Fair for the dead, uh, and and you start to see her family members who are dead, and she has to reconcile with that, and then helping other people reconcile with the fact that they're dead, and that people living in the world don't need them any i i think just in terms of a story and heartwarming and something that took me off guard personally i have to go with spirit fair mostly also too because i've played gang beasts i've played bastion which is you know fall guys and hades respectively yeah. they're not clones but sequels spirit spiritual successors spirit mm. fair was completely new and took me off guard and i i absolutely fell in love with it it's a good way to put it but i'm yeah. going hades <laughs> <laughs> me too it's again it's owned the conversation i just think that yeah. is this out here in, in the west fall guys owned the conversation for a little bit but i don't really hear anyone talk about that game anymore to the yeah, extent of all right 